So welcome everyone. I'm the Agna Hotel Lady and welcome to the Cosmic Clinic. And we're broadcasting live here at Shanti Villa Institute, located in historic Tuskegee, Alabama. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with our opening um, Buswaha Mantra. Buswaha. Okay, so we're ready to begin. I don't know if you all can see the fire, but anyway, I usually keep this fire going in the background. I don't know if you can see it. Um, and I really can't move it around now because it's kind of hot. <laughs> so, um, like I said, we're live here at Shanti Villa Institute, and I'm so happy that you had time to join me today. And I try to broadcast at least a couple of times a month and to talk about Agnihotra, the ancient Ayurvedic uh, wisdom um, that purifies. It's about purifying the planet and purifying yourself. And so this week's topics is going to be talking about some hidden secrets of Agnihotra for those that um, are beginning to Agnihotra, um, beginning with it, or you'd like to learn some things that you may not have heard about or read about in some books, or for those that are just want to fine tune the things that they're doing, um, practicing Agnihotra on a regular basis. Then also, I'm going to be talking about the power of mantras, because as you know, when you're chanting um, the Sanskrit mantras, there's something that happens to you as a person when you are chanting. And so for the Agnihotra process that we do at sunrise and sunset, we do um, chant mantras. It's a different mantra for the morning, and it's another mantra for the evening. So for the morning mantra, we say Agnye Swaha, Agnye Idam Namama, Praja Patiye Swaha, Praja Patiye Idam Namama. For the evening mantra for sunset, we say, no, I'm sorry, that was actually the evening one. <laughs> I just realized that. So the morning mantra is Suyaya Swaha, Suyaya Idam Namama, Praja Patiye Swaha, Praja Patiye Idam Namama. That was the morning one. The, the one I said previously was the evening one. We just got through doing Agna Hotra here. So that was fresh in my mind. So those are the, those are the mantras. So, um, so the teaching is that when you purify the planet, you purify yourself. And so in these challenging times, there's a lot of pollution and climate change going on. Um, and bad weather and all these different things. We've even just heard about what's happening to our brothers and sisters in Texas. Um, it's even more so important to do agriculture on a regular basis because it does reverse um, pollution. It clears the atmosphere. Um, when you perform agriculture, it covers eight miles um, up in a two mile radius. And so you basically are forming a protect, um, protective bubble around yourself and your community to protect against all these harmful things that are happening. It purifies the air, it cleanses the water, and it purifies you. With all of these things that are happening with the climate, um, there's a lot of things that are happening to us physically, mentally, and spiritually. And Agnihotra is a way to bring about balance to the body um, it's a way to clear your chakras and cleanse your aura, your bioplasma body, which is your energetic body. So you may me heard me talk about these things, but your aura, your uh, chakras, um, they're cleansed when you do agriculture. You may not have heard many people talking about that, but this is a tool for balancing um, all that within your body. And just so you know, the pyramid itself, it has three levels to it. So when you look inside your pyramid, and I can't lift this up here because this is hot <laughs> and I have cow dung inside here. Um, 
So, but you'll notice it has three levels in the pyramid that correspond with the seven chakras in your body. Of course, we have more than seven chakras, but these are the chakras. The seven are what are most referred to when you may, maybe when you've taken a yoga class or you read something about chakras. But when you are performing Agnihotra, it cleanses all seven chakras. The more you do Agnihotra, the purer you become. Okay, so there are other disciplines that you can do while performing regular Agnihotra in the morning and the evening time. And the purer you become, and the purer you become, the more potent um, the process is when you do it. Um, you get even more effects. So we typically at Chantyville Institute in Shanti, Atlanta, we teach uh, deep breathing, um, we teach yoga, um, and we talk about sitting still, which is involved in all these processes. But when you do these things along with doing Agnihotra, you basically have purified yourself. So the more you do these things along with doing Agnihotra, um, you're, you're making the purification process of the planet even more strong and you become more uh, purified as well. So I, I wanted to talk about those things. So um, in addition to doing Agnihotra, like I said, I mentioned yoga, meditation, sitting still, deep breathing techniques. So these are uh, techniques that we, Ayurvedic techniques that we teach that train your mind and to do away with negative thoughts. And so Agnihotra is simply a tool used to work on the inner self. Um, some people, when they're working on getting enlightened or getting to a higher level of awareness, they may use other outside means to achieve that. So with Agnihotra, you're going inward. So Agnihotra itself is a tool, but if you're disciplined enough, like when we talked about using these different techniques, um, and you at some point won't even need Agnihotra. It's simply a tool to bring out those aspects of yourself. I would say your godlike um, attributes that may be hidden, all these things will be amplified through regular continued practice of Agnihotra. So like I said, Agnihotra, which is a tool, but if you're disciplined enough, then at some point you won't need the tool because then you'll be able to do these things without having to sit in front of the pyramid. Uh, when we're talking about purifying yourself, we're talking about having pure thoughts, cleansing away your negativity, which is what, what happens when you do Agnihotra, you clear your negative thoughts, you're clearing your chakras, you're cleansing your, uh, your energetic body, your bioplasma body. Um, you are doing away with those things that bring about chaos in the mind. You're putting yourself in an attitude of love all the time. And so there are certain attributes and things that will be able to, you'll be able to generate within yourself if you're pure enough. So, and I've talked about this often on the Cosmic Clinic, there are things that you can do. Uh, people may call it intuition, foresight. Um, back in the old days, in ancient times, they said, oh, this person can tell prophecies and things like that. But really anyone can have these abilities if they're disciplined enough. So, um, a lot of people um, that do Agnihotra, they do other homophiers. So Agnihotra is the basic homophiers. And so Agnihotra is done, as I said, before at sunrise and sunset. And then like these fires here that are done at any other time, those are other homophiers. So if you're a, a, a regular practitioner of Agnihotra, you do these other fires, then you're even more so cleansing, purifying yourself making sure your thoughts are full of love um, and you just feel this beautiful, beautiful wave of, of love um, and energetic healing that takes place from head to toe. And so doing these other homophires along with doing sunrise and sunset Agnihotra, these are the things that really 
boost effects of agnihotra. So though I wanted to talk about that because I don't I don't I don't think I've heard many people uh, talking about the effect on the chakras um, as well as your second body. So for those that are not familiar with the energetic system of you, the human, um, you have um, um, your second body, which I've said before may be described by some people as your aura or your, your bioplasma body, anything like that. That is your energetic body. You have your physical body and then you have your aura. Um, and so when we're talking about doing agnihotra or when you're meditating and things like that, you're really getting deep into that second body, your energy self. You know, so just think of it like, you know, if you have a dress or you have a suit hanging up and you step out the suit and the suit is still there, that is sort of like what happens when you leave your body, when you have a physical death. You leave that physical body here on planet Earth, and then your energetic body goes through its process and it gets um, uh, reunited with the universal energy. And so when you are doing Agnihotra all the time and you are um, building yourself up, you are cleansing yourself, you're be becoming so full of love that you have this very high vibration, then this is when you can do various things within your energy body. And within the energy body, you have um, this naughty system, sort of like um, a train station. <laughs> so the stops on the train station are your chakras. So we're talking about the seven chakras. Okay, these are these the, the energy points within the energy body. And, um, and these correspond with different points of aware awareness and um, within your consciousness. So that's like the simplified version of, of explaining about chakras and um, your, your aura or your bioplasma body. So um, Agnihotra is, is a, a way, it is a tool actually to hasten that process of upping your consciousness. The more you do it, the more purified you become, and the more you get tapped into your chakras. And then of course, you do have chakras that are beyond the body, okay? And then it just it's just several layers of awareness that goes beyond the five senses that we talked about. You know, in our human cells, and I've talked about often, you have your five senses, which you can see, hear, smell, taste, but that's just within the human body. And so when you talk about yogis and masters and people that sit all the time in deep meditation, they do deep breathing, what they're doing is, is they're tapping into their energy body. They're tapping into that universal knowledge, that universal um, energy that is God, the creator, and this is when all the knowledge comes about. These are all these gifts and powers that come to those that sit still all the time. And they really are focused on that deep communication and really going beyond the physical sensation. So, you know, in society, there's a, <laughs> there are a lot of distractions, as we know. You got all these external things that distract you from really the true being of, who, of what you are, which is a, a high level hum, uh, energy being. So you may be distracted by watching a lot of TV, playing video games, um, uh, climbing the corporate ladder, getting promotions, working all the time, um, busy moving, doing stuff. Oh, you have to go see this person. You have to always be busy doing stuff. And we typically, in I live in the United States, we get our gratification from all these things that make us happy. They're outward things. Getting this car will make me happy. Getting that promotion will make me happy. Oh, if I find the right man or the, the right woman, that will make me happy. And really, these are outward things 
that bring about happiness. But in Ayurveda terms, you want to always go inward for the work, for your happiness, for any training, any awareness and consciousness that you are to have as a human being. You know, your energy being is, is, is merged with this, this physical being. You always want to go inward. You, you don't want to ever use external measures continuously to do the inner work because you as a human being, you are made to be able to harness, to be able to use that energetic being, your, your aura, to go well beyond anything on the physical realm. You can do it all yourself. And so when, and there are other techniques that people use, um, the other rituals and things that people do that are external to bring about a higher level of consciousness. And I'm not saying anything is wrong with that, but what we always want to teach is, is that you yourself can do it without any outside help. So with Agnihotra, you're able to build and fine tune your thinking and to get away from these emotions that mess with the very essence of the atoms inside of you, your DNA. When you're angry or fearful um, or frustrated, um, when you're greedy and have all these things, there's something that happens to you on the atomic level, the subatomic level, you're messing with your DNA. And so what we're saying is that with agriculture, every time you step in front of the fire, you're repairing that. You're renewing your atoms. You're revitalizing your DNA. And so with DNA, and I've said before, what they call junk DNA, <laughs> it's not junk DNA. It simply has to be activated through you being still, through you doing meditation and yoga and agnihotra and really tapping in. So when if they were to study a yogi or a master or, or sage they would see that all of their dna is activated so there is no junk because god the creator is not creating any junk you're not full of junk it's just that you have to learn how to activate what is inside of you the physical you through understanding how to train and harness the energetic body with within your physical body and this is um, really what it's about and during these times now um, it is even more so important that agriculture is done on a regular basis in your household or community because there's so many things that are happening and so many more things that will come and you need to be able to form this protective bubble around your house your community your neighborhood and around you and you need to be able to carry this with you when you step outside your home. So that way you are so protected. You're always full of love, no matter what is being said to you, no matter what is being done to you. Because there's a lot of things, chaotic, negative things that are happening. Of course, pollution um, has a very negative impact on our bodies and our thinking. And so agriculture is a way to purify um, your mind, cleanse all the things within your cells and have you renewed um, every time you sit in front of the pyramid. So I, I wanted to talk about that because really Agnihotra is um, it is considered a Kriya Yoga and it is something that's very powerful that um, and Kriya is the highest of all the yogas practiced um, because it deals with action action so if you would like to really put your practice no matter what practice that you have on a daily basis or a weekly basis agnihotra is a tool that can bump it up to the highest level possible so um going back to what we talked about earlier with mantras so um we chant sanskrit mantras when we're um, doing Agnihotra, which is the basic Homa fire. And then we have other Homa fires that, that we do throughout the day. Um, that is, um, there are other Sanskrit mantras that we say. So we're chanting 
all the time. For those of us that are um, doing um, sitting several times a day and into the evening time, you're chanting. And so me personally, and I tell people that, that come and to learn about Agnihotra, you don't have to chant just because you're in front of the fire. You can chant silently. You can chant, you know, aloud when you're driving to do your errands, going to the grocery store, going to the bank. Okay, you're chanting. You're chanting all the time. You're chanting. And basically, you are um, upping your vibration every time you chant. And especially with Sanskrit, which is a high vibratory language, you know, we use that for a reason because that's the highest vibrational um, language in which you can chant to bring about um, a change energetically. So when you do that all the time, you're uh, blocking the negativity. And just chanting alone, it just does something to yourself because you, your human voice, that you know, that is bringing about a change um, to the air. And as we know now, if you're chanting, um, you know, even flowers, you know, and plants, they've measured this now. So oh, plants respond to negative words differently than, than if you're saying positive words. So you're chanting all the time, you're up in your vibration and know that the highest vibration of creation is love. The entire planet, the universe, is based upon uh, love and so the longer you can stay in the vibration of love the more of an effect actually that you can have on the universal prana and when we talk about prana we're talking about the life force that runs through everything so when you talk about chanting mantras all the time you are invoking that which is part of the universal prana and so <clears throat> Once you master that, okay, purifying through your words, okay, then we're talking about chanting mantras. You know, you don't have to have it with the fire. It's great if you can do it with the fire, but I mean, let's just take OM, for example. OM, just chanting the word OM, OM, that is very healing, and um, they've used different equipment to actually measure that, okay? And it's measurable. You could, they actually could see on various equipment, and I can't think of the name of these. Um, I think one is called oscilloscope, but there's a gentleman that wrote um, uh, Power of the Soil. I think his name is Dr. Callahan. He talks about this, and he measured just, um, you know, he had a output with graph and the measurements just by chanting on, it, it purifies the air. There's a change that happens um, on a just a profound level just by chanting OM. OM. So there is a power of mantras that people may not really realize just by chanting every day. And so when you um, hear um, of, of, of masters and yogis um, that um, have their regular things that they do, they do a lot of chanting of mantras. This is something that you can start doing today. What I'll do is I will post the Agnihotra mantras as well as um, the other mantras, uh, some of the other mantras that we chant during the day, but just by chanting, not even with the fire, just the power of your words, you the human being, saying these mantras you're affecting a change within your body not just your physical body but your bioplasma body and so these are what the yogis and masters are talking about this is what they're doing so they look so peaceful and calm and they look like they're so unruffled by what's happening in the world it's because they have taken up these disciplines to bring about um, this higher awareness and to go beyond the five senses, which I've often talked about. So um, I just wanted to just share that because mantras are very, very powerful. Um, and every person can do this. And even if I've had people come by, they, they didn't get a kit right away, or they were trying to learn the mantras before they bought, bought a um, Agnihotra pyramid. 
um, they would just chant mantra just, you know, to themselves while they're walking and things like that. And they said, wow, I, f I felt calmer. I felt better. So you can try this on your, uh, at, at home by yourself. So we always say, don't go by what I tell you or anyone else that Shanti Villa tells you or, or anyone else you're talking to. Experience it yourself. Then you will see exactly what we're talking about, exactly what we experience by um, doing these various things. And chanting mantras are very, very powerful. Um, often I will walk around and outside and touch the trees, <laughs> you know, at Shanti Villa Institute or at Shanti Atlanta, and I'll chant mantras to the trees. And I'll touch the trees, and the vibration that just comes about is it brings me such joy and bliss to be able to be part of nature and to be able to express it in that way by chanting mantras, being part of that universal love. And going back to what I said about the universal prana that, that you can be a part of, cleansing not just the prana that is within you, but being part of purification of the uni universal prana. So now, um, you know, I wanted to go into, um, before we end, talking about, um, you know, when people talk about yogis and masters, a lot of times, you know, people don't think that they could ever achieve the things that a master yogi has done or is doing. And actually, that's not true. So just like we were talking about performing Agnihotra, and chanting mantras all the time. Um, you too can do all these things and you can be just like a, a yogi or a master. And so there's a, it puts in mind uh, a saying that Sri Charles said to me um, before he was saying that, yeah, if you drive down the street and you see you know, a man hanging on the street corner and, he's, and you see him at that street corner every single day for 10, 15, 20 years, He's a yogi of that street corner because think of all the things that he has seen day to day, every single day, the knowledge that he has gained just by being on that street corner, observing what is happening as the people go by, what is happening, you know, who is doing what on which corner, who gets into a fight with who, who is dating who, whatever is going on in that street corner, that man's been there observing. And you and you probably seen this when you've driven around and in certain neighborhoods, you've seen this one guy that's always there in that street corner. So he said, yes, that's that man alone. He's a yogi of the street corner. And so I, I love that illustration because it, to me, it just reminds all of us is that whatever you do on a daily basis, that is what you become. So in my mind, with the right training, with Agnihotra, deep breathing, meditation, and sitting still, that anyone can be a yogi. You can be a yogi on the street corner. You can be a yogi if you're a grocery store clerk. You can be a yogi, you know, if you're homeless living in a tent. Anyone can be a yogi with the right training. It's not the place that you are in your life. It's what you're in in your heart, your intention. So with the right training, everyone can be just like a master or a yogi. And so, you know, no one is separate from the other person. So remember, this applies to everyone. This could be the drug dealer, the person that is on um, drugs or whatever it is, that person can be liberated from that with the right training and they can become more than what they were before. And that's what I wanted to end the show with to tonight um, on this positive note that everyone can achieve what the masters and the yogis can, because you are made in the image of the creator, God the creator, and with the right tools, you can unleash all these wonderful, beautiful powers to become more than what you were before. Every time you sit in front of the pyramid, you're a renewed person, no matter what has happened just moments before, a week before, or a year before. And so I just wanted to um, share these thoughts with you. And as always, thank you so much for joining me here. This is the Agni Hotel Lady, and this is the Cosmic Clinic, and I will see you the next time. Be blessed.